An ordinary start to the day in Whitley Abbey Business and Enterprise College in Coventry. But these year seven pupils will be with teacher Kay Griffin for most of the morning. And though she's a science teacher, she won't be teaching them science. Like all year seven groups at Whitley Abbey, this class is part of an innovative approach to teaching and learning called Opening Minds. I opted into Opening Minds last year because I'm fairly new in my career, I'm only in my second year of teaching, and I'd like to become a more experienced teacher as I go along. And I think I've learned a lot about teaching in Opening Minds, mainly because I've had to look at things from a totally different perspective. But we're going to work in pairs or threes today. Opening Minds is all about giving children a range of skills or competences that enables them to engage with learning and with the world. And we're looking at working with people and I'm looking for respect for other people and listening skills today. As a modern foreign language teacher, um, I was more used to seeing students perhaps two, maybe three times a week at, at GCSE. And um, I think that a lot of people in and out of my room all the time meant that I felt that there was something missing for me and, and I found it in opening minds. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. But the competences that we're addressing this morning are using time wisely, working cooperatively in a small group. Catherine Nolan leads the Opening Minds team. This is their first full year of Opening Minds teaching, and this is her year eight class. Dylan. What about taking risk? Is that your target for the week? Yeah, well, you need to keep that in mind when you're doing your work this morning, and perhaps you might be willing to take a risk with your learning this morning and do something that perhaps you wouldn't ordinarily do. Okay you're able to talk to them on a daily basis about their learning and talking to students about learning is, is a really fantastic experience. Can we then please open our exercise book? We take a large number of students from an area of real deprivation where there's very little money coming into households. Students struggle to have the right equipment to bring. Um, there's issues over them having not just bag and, and blazer but, but them having shoes. We have a very mixed intake, so we do have a high ability at the top end, but we have a very long tail end of students. So, for example, our current Year 7 intake, about 33% of our Year 7 um, are on the Special Needs Register. We're going way back now. We're going way back to 1350. Opening Minds contends that children learn better if they don't study separate subjects in separate periods. Today's lesson follows on with our theme of homelessness and part of your objectives today are to be able to explain what happened in 1351 to make a massive increase in people that didn't have anywhere to live. This our lesson addresses history, English and thinking skills. Something major happened in Britain in 1350 and it was brought to us originally by the rats. It's called the Black Death. Put your hand up if you've heard of the Black Death before. Okay. It swept the Opening Minds it. team has it's developed a series of, of cross-curricular themes. A lot of our workforce what this means is that teachers are teaching out. outside their specialisms. Well, it's been very exciting planning different it's lessons and looking at things from different point of view. And we would all have been the slaves of the landlord. You don't always have time as, as teachers to go and liaise with different departments and see where that could fall in, where you could work together and that's been really beneficial and I do think my teaching has benefited as a result of that. It's a professional challenge in the sense that I'm now involved in teaching a wider variety of subjects that I wasn't before. We're looking at the Opening Minds team that we have a specialist from each of the curriculum areas. Everybody is able to go to somebody who can support a particular lesson plan. I think that's been really, really helpful. Tom, can you read the bold card for us that tells us what we're going to do today? The aim of his activity is for you to work out why James became a beggar. It's hard work, but I think the whole of the senior team are absolutely committed to it. We're just looking to see if we can work out the order of James's life. We want it to work. We have thrown resources at it. There's a lot of team planning, and I think staff will say they are exhausted. But equally, they are um, very enthusiastic and motivated by the experience they have and, and the experience they see the students having. That would have been number one. Which one should we put next? I'm not sure. A key part of the way Whitley Abbey approaches opening minds is to have extended teaching periods. 
These year sevens spend 17 hours a week with Kay Griffin in her opening minds class. It builds self-confidence and self-esteem much more rapidly, in my opinion, than the normal transition from primary to secondary, where you've got sometimes 10, 12 teachers, 50 minutes a week. That matches with that. And that doesn't make for stable relationships very quickly. I was part of the primary liaison team last year, and I went out to visit them in year six. We all know what it's like to go and visit pupils in year six, and you see people that you think, they might have an issue with this when they're coming up to year seven. And I had a few people in my class that I thought, I'm gonna have a few issues there and I know what to do. And they've not materialized. So what happened after the disease hit? Now find all the ones that talk about the disease. I think what they feel is they have ownership of where they are. When you're moving from class to class with different teachers, sometimes that gets lost. The way that they've embedded themselves in the school, the way that they've approached their work and the way that they've settled into their classes really quickly, I think is down to that consistency. And if anything, that's what opening minds can give the pupils. I feel good, like, because I've got more confidence in myself and I can open myself to miss our teachers that we have. It's quite good because you get to learn more and uh, you get to concentrate. Gives us more like time to think and boost our confidence up so we don't get nervous through sets and don't get a low result. Right guys, we're going to move on and I want people to start defending their lines. Does anybody have an answer that they think is the most relevant to answer the question of why James became a beggar? Okay. After the Satchel of Labours, who passed James, had to leave his job in Newcastle to return to Hexham, there was still... It's actually quite a hard concept for the children to get, especially at Year 7, and it's quite a good skill to embed in the run-up to GCSEs. Why do you think that made him become a beggar? Defend your line. He's lost his job, and he ain't got no money, and there's nothing back at home because it wiped out the Black Death wiped out the village. Perfect. If you can teach a pupil to back up any argument with some evidence, and if we can teach them to do that independently, it's going to benefit them across the whole range of subjects as they go through the school. All right, this is the story of Rosa. Rosa. And at the end of it, I'm going to ask you a question. What is migration? It's what we're looking at in particular this morning, looking at the push and pull factors linked to migration. We've been looking at rainforests and we're now beginning to look at um, the people that live in Brazil and the citizenship issues there are for people in Brazil. Our crops were poor and because we didn't make much money from them, we couldn't afford to buy basic things such as clothes and shoes. This morning the main aim is to get them to appreciate that um, people of all walks of life have to make difficult decisions and perhaps that, you know, the path can be difficult. About a month ago, we decided that we would have a better life moving to the city of Sao Paulo. And this morning, the competences that they're going to be looking at are to do with listening skills, using both sets of listening muscles, our eyes and our ears, um, and also focusing on the competence of risk-taking. OK, now I'm going to ask for some volunteers. Oh, you're ever so keen. I want you to imagine yourself in Rosa's shoes and tell the group some factors, but I don't want you to tell them whether you think they're push or pull. I think Holly's very keen. Holly, do you want to come and stand on Rosa's feet? Everybody looks at how they can move themselves forward in their learning and what it is that they could do about what they're doing at the moment that's different. Go for it. Some uh, factors. Education for children something that they would find a really big challenge and something that they would find a little bit of a mountain to climb. Steph, you want to stand in Rosa's feet for me? For each individual student, it's obviously going to be very different. For their, like, for a job, for the family, to get money. And they're encouraged to take that risk, to see that it is safe. Or a pull factor, do we think? The class is aware that everybody in the room at some stage is taking some sort of a risk. They have more water and like more money and food. And okay, thank you. When we discuss afterwards how we felt in our learning, I think that they are able to acknowledge to each other, yes, I saw you take that risk and that was really brave, well done. You're not just um, doing it by yourself, you're having help from you, like different people.
with different abilities than you. So now I want to take risks and like try and get the answer right and do the same as other people basically. It gets your, your education, like just your see results. So it's better, and you know that you're doing it for something in your life. How much is it going to cost you to build four walls? So that the pupils understand difficult decisions, they have the task of building a house in the city with just $94. Yeah, yeah we've already used $25. We need, I reckon we should get some of them. Oh, scrap wood and mud, you could put that. And that's free, look, that's free. Plastic sheeting. Get about 10 of them, because they could be about that size. Yeah. You so that house what, it yeah, you can build it off cement. And Oh, that's $40. Lansing is $10 per week. Yeah, that's what I'm paying of glass. Can you stop? In back garden. And listen. <laughs> Are we ready, ladies? How have you spent your money? Kind of wisely. OK, where have you built your house then? We talk about responsibility for learning. And the flip side of that is encouraging students to take responsibility for their own behaviour. It's not free, though. No. A's free. We've discovered a huge drop in detentions. Um, we feel as a result of opening minds and students being encouraged to take greater responsibility for themselves. Um, also a, a, a huge increase in attendance that we're really quite proud of. We've got mud. They're there it's all the time tenor. for their learning and so their focus is always so learning. They'd like hold the wood bits up on the yeah. side of the walls. What's the climate like? Raining. Raining. So what's going to happen to your mud, Dylan? It's going to uh, thingy, or go soggy. Well, at the beginning of the year eight, I didn't really put my hand up and stuff, but now we've got a new teacher and everybody listens and stuff. There's, like, something to make you put your hand up because you know that people are going to be listening. Circle time is pivotal to what goes on in the classroom. And I think they really appreciate the opportunity to share and evaluate together how much progress they've made. Now, a score out of 10 for today. Um, about a 9, because I think everyone today has been cooperative so far. I reckon a 10, because I've worked harder than I usually do, and I've got more work done. 9. Why 9 for the last one, Jordan? Because I've turned around once, right this week. OK, and your target for the week was...? Not to turn around. He checked himself and he said, ah. I did once, I did turn around once. And I think that that openness and that willing to say, actually, yes, that was me and I did do that. So I think we get far less of, it wasn't me. About a 10 because I work well in a group. Can I just say, Holly, this morning in particular, I think you've made a huge effort. Do we think that anybody has anything positive to add to, as to whether or not they think Holly's met her target this morning? I think she has because she put her hand up to volunteer for that, put yourself standing, in Moses' shoes. shoes. Yeah, good, well done. Anybody else? I think that Holly has done better this morning than what she's done all week to me. She's been, like, well good. <laughs> it's too positive a step and it's had too big an impact to even consider going back. Why would we consider going back? It's... It's been, it's been amazing. And I think Holly's right. I think we deserve a round of applause for this morning.